So in this video, I'm going to share my screen and show you exactly how to work with multiple calendars, how to manage multiple Google calendars. If you start working for someone as a virtual assistant and you are managing their calendar and you also have your own calendar, how can you manage that? Or maybe you are working for multiple people and they all have their Google calendar account and you are all managing their Google calendars. How can you manage multiple calendars? That's what I'm going to show you. I'm going to start by, show, by showing you how to accept access, how your client can share access to their Google Calendar and how you can accept access and how you can view their Google Calendar. So I'm going to share my screen and we can get started. So right now I am logged in in Google Calendar. And let's say this is your client Google Calendar and they want to give you access to this calendar so that you can start managing it for them. In order for them to give you access, make sure first they are logged into their correct Gmail account. This is a calendar and they come right here under my calendars. Right here, this is, if they have more than one calendar, they are going to see them right here. But if they want to share access with this calendar, you see this three dot, they can click on it and click on settings and sharing. And they can simply scroll down right here to share with and they can click add people and groups and they can write your email address. When they write your Gmail account, they can simply choose a permission right here. If they leave it as see all event details, you can see all their event, but you cannot make changes to the event. If they give you this access, you can make changes to event, but you cannot add people to the calendar. If they give you this access, then you can do everything. And when they did this and they click send, you will receive a notification via email. I'm going to go to my email and I will show you the notification that you will receive when a client share access with you. So you see, this is the email that you should receive. I just received this email. And when you open it, you are going to see this message. All you need to do is join shared calendar. When you click this link, you are going to be added to their calendar. And so right now you see, this is a pop off. As soon as I click add, it is going to be added to my list of calendars. You see now before I click add, I have my calendar right here and birthday and whatever. And when I click here, the calendar should be added down here. If I scroll, you see it right here, Sadiq Umar personal calendar. And right now if I unselect my personal calendar and choose this calendar and I will come back to today. If I create an event, it will be added to the client calendar right here. And let me show you how it works. Right now I am logged in as my uh, as the virtual assistant. And if I click right here, and I'm going to add an event. And I go ahead and add all the other details and whatever, and I click save. You see the event have been added right here. And if I go to the client logged in, you see the event have been added right here. And the same thing will happen if the client add an event right here, I will be able to see the event when I am logged into my Gmail account. So this is how a client can share access with you. And this is how you can accept access. And this is really all there is to it. All you need to do is whatever, all the clients that you are working with, you give them one email account, you are on Gmail account and they share access with you. When they share access with you, you can simply do anything that you want to do in their calendar, depending on the permission that they give you. Let me show you one thing. Let's say you have so many calendar right here. If you are working with so many clients, let's say all of these different calendars are for different clients. If you select this, you select this, all the calendars that are checked, you will see the, all the event that are added to these calendars. So if these are all for different client, in order to manage this efficiently, make sure you unselect any calendar that you are not working with it actively. If you are working for Sadiq Umar, then you make sure you unselect all of these other calendars so that you will see only the event and task that are attached to this calendar. When you want to work for another client, you will unselect this calendar and you will select their calendar and you will be able to see all the items, all the events that are on that client calendar. So in order to avoid getting confused or anything like that, make sure you work with a calendar 
one calendar at a time because if you choose multiple calendars you are easily going to get confused and you can make a mistake so this is how you can work with multiple calendars and when it comes to time zone remember with google calendar you can set a time zone to see things in your calendar different with your client for example if uh, my time zone is GMT plus one and I am working for someone whose G uh, time zone is different, I can set the calendar right here in my view to show me all the events in my time zone GMT plus one. And the client can also choose to see the event in their own, their own time zone. So all I need to do is choose one or two things. If you are working for someone in a different time zone, if you want to look at their calendar, when you want to set up an event for them, make sure you change the time zone to their time zone. Let me show you how to change time zone. If you select a calendar right here and you come to settings, this gear icon and you click settings. When you scroll down, you see currently I am working with this time zone. And so if I want to change it, if I set an event, if I come back here, and I click right here. If I want to add an event, I click here, uh, add a title. And the event this uh, this time is going to be in the time zone that is default to my calendar settings. I can change it from here. I can click time zone and I can change the time zone from right here. And I will be able to set an event and create an event in any time zone that I want. But if I want to see the event, all the event that are uh, let me come back to mount view if i want to see all this event if i want to see them in the client time zone then i have to come up here and i will have to change the time zone if i change the time zone to this then when i come back here all the event i see right here i'm going to see them in the time zone that i choose this is important because if your client you want to send your client a reminder 30 minutes before the event has happened if the time zone is set to maybe US central time zone and it shows maybe the event will happen at 7 p.m. You forgot 7 p.m. is equivalent to 1 p.m. your time. So you might even miss it. But if you change it and you are looking at the calendar in your own time zone, this is going to help you know exactly the time that the event is going to happen. So this is how you can work with multiple Google calendars for your client. If you are working with However many clients, you can work with them this way. You can even work with different Gmail accounts. If you have many clients and you don't want to have all their calendars in one Gmail account, then you can create a multiple Gmail account and you can work with different clients with different Gmail account. So this is how you can manage multiple calendars when working with Google Calendar. And if you want to learn more about full Google Calendar tutorial, you can watch this next video. If you find this video helpful, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe. I will see you in the next one.